Hello, I'm Ginko Sequoia and I am the author of the book The Dreamistic. I wrote this novel after discovering the plight of homeless widows in India. There are several chapters on widows. Uh, in this particular one that I'm going to read out, uh, Utika, a young widow herself, explains their suffering. In this particular chapter, remember everything she says is true. Utika was sewing, Solly was reading, then he looked up. Utika, please don't leave here too soon. She immediately dropped her needle. I don't think that I will be leaving here soon. Solly, I am a widow, where would I go? More importantly, why would I want to go anywhere else? You have given me a home. Solly mulled this over. In England, he was used to his best staff leaving for better prospects. He asked his next question innocently and without looking up. Why does being a widow restrict where you can go? She remained quiet for a while. Let me just say that it is not easy for people like me to acquire a job or a home. Why is life difficult for a widow? She took a deep breath and bowed her head. In India, when a woman marries, she often goes to live with the family of her husband. However, when her husband dies, Indian society sees widows as not worthy, cursed and devoid of status. When they become a widow, Many Hindus, including their own birth family, will shun them. Their adoptive family may also see them as a financial burden. Consequently, they are frequently removed from their husband's home, often violently and cast out. They are put on the streets with no food or shelter. They are not just denied what they need to survive in, but what they believe in. Orthodox religion forbids their participation in religious festivals. They are expected to give up all their earthly desires and just wait for death. They can no longer wear jewellery or makeup. They may be expected to shave their heads so that they lose their femininity. They can only wear a white sari. This signifies that the colour has been drained from their life. For money, their only hope is to beg from pilgrims or recite prayers and sing devotional songs. They are not only forbidden to attend religious festivals, they can no longer attend celebrations of birth, marriage or death. In some cases, even their shadow is deemed a curse and must be avoided. The widow is referred to as it or a creature and treated like a stray animal because it was only hers, her husband's presence that gave her human status. This along with the cutting of family ties and the ability to celebrate their culture results in terrible loneliness. Being abandoned and betrayed by the ones who should love you causes terrible heartache, despair and depression. The ropes on Solly's heart bales began to pull. Is this a small problem? By now the tears were rolling down Utica's cheeks. Oh no, it is beyond comprehension. They say there are 40 million widows in India. I am very lucky. Sully stood up, walked over and then knelt down on the floor. He didn't plan his next action, it just happened. In the silence he sucked up the herbal essence in her hair and lightly kissed her head before wiping away her tears with his next scarf. Then he made a solemn vow. 
one that chilled the air in the room. Utica, I want you to know that one day I'm going to do something about this. Sometimes we can look back and remember the day that we fell in love or made a decision to reach out and help someone. It is often one thing. It can be an action, a touch, a look or some words. In this case, it was a simple sentence fashioned from a blacksmith's forge and seared onto a beating heart. You can donate to my widow's charity and learn more about it on the treemystic.com. It is my hope that we can make the story come alive. You can also buy the book on the treemystic.com or Amazon. Thank you for listening and I hope you'll look forward to watching more of the videos on the widows and the rest of the book.